The fight of the century, Zuckerberg and Musk may actually settle their beef in a cage. But when you're that rich, you don't have beef, you have Wagyu. The Amish sue over poop. Plus, Portland gives snorting kits to addicts. Even liberals think this doesn't smell right. Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. In this week's headlines, 21 House Republicans threatened to block the GOP's 2024 fiscal appropriations bills if spending wasn't cut. If they can't agree on how much to spend, it could lead to a partial government shutdown. And no, this isn't a rerun episode of America Uncovered. This is a rerun episode of reality. If you're thinking, wait, didn't the U.S. just prevent a shutdown like a month ago? No. The U.S. just procrastinated a shutdown like a month ago. It feels like the U.S. is always on the verge of collapsing. So I guess Joe Biden actually is the best choice to represent America after all. Actor Hill Harper announced he would run for one of Michigan's U.S. Senate seats, which will open as Senator Debbie Stabenow isn't running for re-election. This is ridiculous. I mean, when has a TV or movie personality ever held office? Besides Donald Trump, or Ronald Reagan, or Arnold Schwarzenegger, or Al Franken, or Jesse the Mind Ventura, or Guy Fieri. He's been the mayor of Flavortown for the last 20 years. That's why he was so cordial with Donald Trump at a USC fight. Just professional courtesy. Harper is the sixth Democratic candidate to enter the race for the Senate seat. This is in a state that has a giant RoboCop statue. I think I know what kind of leaders they want. Speaking of robots, Google's updated privacy policy stated it would use publicly available data to train BARD, its ChatGPT AI bot, and other AI technologies. Yes, Google is sucking up all your data to train AI. All I have to say is good luck. Because Microsoft tried allowing a Twitter bot to learn by interacting with users, and it was shut down in less than a day for being too sexist and racist. The legality of this is questionable, as ChatGPT's maker OpenAI is being sued for allegedly stealing data and using it to train its AI models. Two authors and comedian Sarah Silverman are also suing OpenAI for copyright infringement for allegedly using their material to train the AI. So not only are we the product, with our data for sale to the highest bidder, we're also being used to make robots smarter. This feels like being fired and forced to train your replacement. And your replacement is going to eventually take over your entire species. Way to somehow make Terminator feel even more dystopian, Google. And after the break, the Minnesota Amish win a lawsuit. Welcome back. Minnesota's Court of Appeals ruled that an Amish community wouldn't need to install modern septic systems to protect groundwater supplies. This case made it all the way up to the Supreme Court, which ruled in favor of the Amish's right to religious freedom, and moved the case back down to a lower court. We reached out to the Amish community for a comment on this big win, but for some reason they didn't reply to any of our emails. Speaking of technology, Meta's new app, Threads, became the fastest growing app in history, gaining over 100 million users in its first five days. Well. Fastest growing app in history for now. At least until I get my app up and running. Puppy Pie. It lets adorable puppies deliver pizza to you anytime you're feeling depressed. And considering how many people are now using the Twitter clone Threads, I feel like that number is about to skyrocket. Since Threads launch, Twitter traffic has slowed substantially. This graph, posted by the CEO of Cloudflare, a web performance company, shows virtually just how far it dropped lately. And here's another visual indicator of how Twitter has been doing since, well, since it began. If this keeps up, the Twitter dumpster fire might finally be doused. Sadly, since this is a Twitter clone doing it, it might just be getting snuffed out by an even bigger dumpster fire. Twitter's chief technology officer, Elon Musk, isn't taking this lying down. Twitter accused Meta of stealing trade secrets and intellectual property and threatened to sue them. And Musk, being Musk, he also called Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg a cuck. But considering Zuckerberg allegedly stole Musk's darling and is scoring with it repeatedly while he helplessly watches, I'm not sure Musk knows what cuck means. This rivalry may come to blows as Musk challenged Zuckerberg to a cage match and he accepted. And UFC President Dana White said he's willing to promote the fight 
has a date in mind and is confident he can get it sanctioned. He's so serious about hosting this fight, the UFC store is actually selling Zuckerberg versus Musk t-shirts. I wish I was so rich that my messy public spats made me extra money. But sadly, I doubt anyone's gonna buy a Chapel versus Mikey the Chipotle cashier shirt. You wanna keep charging me for a little extra meat? I'll see you in the octagon. While Musk has a size advantage in the fight, Zuckerberg might have the edge in skill. He's been training in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and even won his first tournament in the no-gi white belt 149-pound division. Zuckerberg has, of course, received all his Jiu-Jitsu lessons from the world's greatest instructor, Google, since they're now training robots. Joe Biden met with King Charles in the UK for the first time since his coronation. And while I don't usually cover stocks, I assume once it was announced that these two would be in the same place at the same time, shares of Metamucil went straight to the moon. The leaders met to speak about the climate crisis ahead of a NATO summit. They don't want climate change to lead to a new ice age, mainly because they remember how bad the last one was when they were teenagers. A federal judge blocked the Biden administration's request to stop an order that limits its ability to communicate with social media companies. While it still can contact them over matters such as cyber attacks and national security, the judge explained this ruling only prohibits something the defendants have no legal right to do. Contacting social media companies for the purpose of urging, encouraging, pressuring, or inducing in any manner the removal, deletion, suppression, or reduction of content containing protected free speech posted on social media platforms. The Biden administration filed to appeal this, but if Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg have taught me anything, there's only one real way to settle this. Biden and this judge need to fight it out in a cage. Winner gets the ruling they want, and the loser will likely be disintegrated into a puff of bone dust after the first punch. And after the break, Portland gives snorting kits to drug addicts. Welcome back. The Multnomah County Health Department will soon distribute around Portland snorting kits containing methods for using drugs, such as tinfoil for smoking and straws for snorting, to encourage addicts to take fentanyl in less lethal ways than injecting it. Several Democrats in Portland think this is reckless. Mayor Ted Wheeler said, I adamantly oppose distributing paraphernalia to encourage using a drug that is the leading cause of death for Americans under 50 and responsible for 190 fatal overdoses a day in the U.S. On the bright side, this should give us enough material for several more seasons of Portlandia. Speaking of terrible ideas, in its 1,100-page report, California Reparations Task Force asked state lawmakers to end child support debt for black residents. They say it disproportionately affects African-American families, particularly the interest. Makes sense. I mean, nothing says reparations like arguing that black families shouldn't receive money for a perceived harm that happened to them in the past. And what better way is there to support the black community than stopping single mothers and children from receiving support? Well, I guess if kids need money, they can go to Arkansas, where the state passed a law removing the requirement for children under 16 to obtain a work certificate for employment. Look, all I'm saying, the most popular game among young people is Minecraft. Children yearn for the mines. Sponsors of the bill said it removed needless obstacles for children under the age of 16 who wanted to work. But State Senator Frederick Love expressed concern, saying, when you talk about human trafficking, this is where this could be a dangerous situation, where you have children, number one, you don't know how old they are, doing unsuitable work for children and their parents not knowing where they are. And speaking of trafficking, the Department of Justice, for some reason, removed several portions on its website containing information on child trafficking right as the mainstream media continues to criticize a popular movie exposing child trafficking. Well, that won't fuel any conspiracies, I'm sure. NATO held a summit in Lithuania. The Russia-Ukraine war was a big topic on the agenda. NATO said that Ukraine could join, but only when allies agree and conditions are met. This angered Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky, who said the lack of a timeline and vague wording was absurd. He also said this left an opening for bargaining Ukraine's NATO membership with Russia in negotiations, as their fear of Ukraine joining NATO was one of their justifications for invading. Biden and G7 members met with Zelensky, and while they said they'd support Ukraine, they didn't support giving them NATO membership at this time, though Biden said they would eventually. 
However, the U.S. is sending Ukraine cluster bombs, which are highly controversial. Banned in more than 120 countries, cluster munitions scatter mid-flight, raining down smaller explosives across a wide area, imposing a deadly risk to civilians. We are trying to ramp up our production of the kind of artillery shells that they're using most. But that production rate is still not where we want it to be. So we're going to send these additional artillery shells that have cluster bomblets in them uh, to help bridge the gap. Did he say cluster bomblets? Is it just me or does that sound like a cereal? Harmful to civilians? What are you talking about? These have 11 essential vitamins and minerals, part of a perfectly balanced and final breakfast. Many of the U.S. allies and several U.S. politicians are criticizing sending Ukraine cluster bombs. But former President Barack Obama responded to this by saying, killing civilians? Let this man cook. This is a worse rerun than the government shutdown. Biden defended the decision to give Ukraine cluster bombs by saying, the U.S. ran out of ammunition, which is a horrible thing to announce at any time, but especially when the U.S. Marines are without a leader for the first time in over 150 years. Its commandant stepped down on Monday. Meanwhile, Alabama Senator Tommy Tuberville has been refusing to confirm Pentagon nominees, blocking 265 military appointments, including the new U.S. Marines leader. Tuberville is doing this in protest of a Pentagon policy allowing time off and travel allowances for military personnel to receive abortions. So yes, right now, Mark Zuckerberg may be in better fighting shape than the U.S. military. So what do you think about the stories we covered this week? Leave your comments below. If you want to help us deliver nonpartisan news, support America Uncovered by going to patreon.com slash America Uncovered. All it takes is as little as a dollar or more per episode to help us keep making great videos. You can also set a monthly limit. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.